fried chicken, mealy gravy, um, mashed, mashed potatoes. potatoes, and Michael is here. I don't know. I'm gonna have to jar in a minute. <laughs> Michael Bosch. He has a YouTube channel, yep. Michael Bosch Cooking, yep. and he's going to be helping. He's yep. going to be making the cornbread, and I'm going to be doing the chicken showing him. Very good. So let's get started. Let me get the camera adjusted, and we're going to be having mashed potatoes too. Cut this light off just a minute. Okay, can you all see that okay? I'm going to put the light on. How does that look to y'all? Okay. Michael, how does that look to you? I think it looks good. Hello, everybody. Hope okay. you can hear us. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Here we go. Do we want to start with the potatoes first and get those peeled and or that's going to be the least thing that's going to take to cook. Or do you want to put the chicken Let on Let me put first? the chicken on, okay. and then we'll do the potatoes. Sounds good. Because it takes the chicken longer, and we can cut the potatoes in small pieces. Yeah. Okay, I've got a whole chicken here, and I'm going to uh, salt and pepper it with house seasoning. This is onion, powder, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. Yeah. So I'm going to do that first. And you want to be generous. And I wasn't going to use my trusty bag, but I think I'm going to. I always just put it in this uh, that way I can mix it up better Michael did a video cutting up this chicken and he did an excellent job y'all need to go follow him he really has some good tilts and some good recipes and there's no way I can cut up a chicken like Michael does. There's no way. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can. No. It's pretty easy. Not that good. Okay, let me set that right there and wash my hands. Oh. Always have to wash your hands good when you're messing with chicken. Yep, because that uh, can spread salmonella and it get all over the kitchen before you know it. Yep. We always do, we're real careful about that. Mixing up some Clorox water here. Okie dokie. Alright, I'm going to get a little buttermilk out of the refrigerator. You know, we use buttermilk on about everything. Now this is, uh, we're making mealy gravy. So we're gonna use a little bit of cornmeal um, to bread this chicken. Now there's, a, there's something if you don't have buttermilk that you can do. A lot of people don't keep their milk in the house, but if you take the regular milk, and put a little bit of vinegar in it mm -hmm. and let it sit, it will turn into a, a buttermilk substitute that you can use if you don't have buttermilk on hand. That's right. Or lemon juice. Anything yep. that's got a, an acidic uh, base to it, that's what you can put in your milk, your whole milk, to make uh, buttermilk. So you can substitute, uh, like I say, vinegar or lemon juice and make uh, buttermilk. Just let it sit for five or ten minutes and it'll do the same thing. Yeah, that's a good tilt. I've done that before yeah. with vinegar. Okay, I've got salt, pepper, buttermilk on here. So now I'm going to put probably, and this is a whole chicken, so I'm probably going to just use about a half a cup. 
a meal, and about a half a cup of flour to start off to see if that's enough because we want it good and crusty. Um, and um, this chicken was a free range. It was free range. It was non-GMO, and it was about six pounds. Is what that one was today. Yeah, and it was ten dollars. So that you can feed a family of six with a chicken like this. Yeah, I think we got about. I cut the breast into. Uh, did I cut it into four pieces? I can't remember if I just four. cut one. So there's probably ten pieces of chicken in that. That we cut that chicken yeah. that way. You so that. that'll feed a family. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put some more cornmeal. You just put uh, cornmeal and everything as much as you like, but I like for it to be crispy. Michael, if you want to. Go ahead and peel the potatoes. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start doing those and then we'll show you how to cut those up. And yeah. Get those put on the stove if you're cooking. Yeah. And those will take about 15 minutes to cook on those so we can get those mashed up. I'm just uh, rolling this chicken good. See it? All right. Now I'm going to put, I'm going to have to turn my camera around a little bit. I'm trying to figure out a way. But it is so hard to show the stove. I'm just going to show you the stove over there a little. And um, show you that I'm putting oil in the pan. What kind of oil? Now you can use vegetable oil or Wesson oil, lard. I've got this uh, canola oil that I got from Sam's because it was cheaper than the other ones and it's just as good and it'll fry at a higher temperature. Yeah. Now you want to check your oils too when you get those at the, the flash point on those you don't want to get it use the oil that's going to have a lower temperature cooking on it it'll burn because yeah that's true as you're cooking it for a long time you're frying it you want something that's going to have a high temperature point on it so like, like Joanne said some type of a neutral uh, vegetable oil is perfect. Yeah okay so I have put about um, not hardly an inch of oil in the pan. I hope you can see that. Uh, now I'm going to turn my pan on. And I want my pan to sizzle when I put my chicken in. I think I'm just going to bring them over here a little bit. I hope I don't make you all sick doing this. Okay, can you all see the pan? Okay. Give me something to. Uh, I use a fork. I just like a plain old fork for turning my chicken. I like gadgets, but for chicken or me, I just like a fork. Just go back to the basics, huh? Right. <laughs> and less dishes. Yep. So, I'm going to test my pan here. See if it's hot enough. not hot enough and while we're waiting I will give you an update on mother mother is doing a little bit better today um, she's sitting in her chair she's um, getting up by herself going to bed by herself so we're happy that she's doing that well and you all keep the priors coming um, and she will be eating this. Her appetite has come back, and she wanted mealy gravy and chick fried chicken and mashed potatoes and cornbread. So we're fixing it for her, and 
we appreciate everybody's prayers and the messages. I just can't thank you all enough. Um, it's just wonderful to have uh, so many people supporting and praying. But I'm going to go back now to the chicken. And see how that pan's coming. I'm impatient. I like to just get it in the pan. Not hardly hot enough. Now, you want to fry your chicken until it's good and done. Um, just take your time with it. Let it cook about 45 minutes to an hour. And if you'll listen to your chicken, you can tell by the sound of the oil. And I've told somebody that one time, and they just kind of laughed at me, but he's saying that I was telling the truth. When the chicken gets ready to turn, the sound of it frying uh, sounds different. So. Well, you'll have to point that out. I will. Out. I have never heard that before. I will. Okay. We're going to put this in. Then we're going to turn it over to Michael. He's going to make cornbread and mashed potatoes. And not hardly not hot, hot enough. enough. Um, he's going to make uh, cornbread, and he makes it a little bit different than what we do. And I did a video, a live video, and I did the way that we do cornbread. Well, he does it a little bit different. And uh, he's going to show us his way of doing it. We're kind of cramped in here for space to get both of us in at the same time. Um, just kind of, kind of hard. Okay, I hear a little sizzle now. That's what you want to hear. Hear that little sizzle? And when you're frying chicken for gravy, you want to have your fat on there. You want the fat on there because that's going to make good grease that makes good gravy. So it's coming along. Hear that sizzle? Yeah. Okay. Michael did a good job with his chicken. I'm going to, I've always been able to cut up a chicken, but it's gotten harder um, as I'm getting older. Up. I don't know everything gets harder when you get older. Now this pan is going to look crowded, but that's okay. I'll arrange the chicken around and it'll all cook good. This is the last piece of chicken. So I'm having to roll it in the flour and meal. You can crowd it a little because it'll cook down some. those giblets but there's what it looks like and I'm gonna let Michael turn the camera around and uh, we'll answer questions at the end or I'll have my sister come in here and read them to us if uh, she will but here's how you cook your chicken okay Michael take it away all right I'm gonna move us back over to here like I said to Joanne I hope we don't make you sick moving you around well, let's see if I can get this set up here so I can show you how we're going to cut these. Move that little camera to my. Yeah, right. how we're going to cut these potatoes up so that we can have them for our mashed potatoes. I think. There we are. 
I think I'll have to move back here. Can I can you show me where a good knife is I can use? I can use that one that we did earlier. What? The knife. Can we use that one there? Yeah. All right, let me grab a knife, folks, and I'll be right back. Well, uh, Michael, here's all kinds of them. Just pick you one out. That one's good. Okay. That one's really good. That's why I keep that out, laying out, because it's really good to use. All right. Check your mind. All right, can can y'all hear me? I just somebody said they couldn't hear me earlier, so I just gonna make sure that everybody can hear us good on that. Alrighty, so I've got my potatoes peeled, and I just used a potato peeler on them, and I've got them in water. So a little trick and a hack is when you get through, once you take the skin off the potatoes, you want to put them in water, because the air will oxidize them and they'll turn them pink, and we don't want that on our potatoes. So we're going to cut these up. And I cut these up in uniform pieces, that way when I, when I cook them, they'll all be about the same size and they'll get done about the same size. So I cut these about maybe half an inch on these. And I kind of judge it by how many people we're going to be serving. And so one of these potatoes, I look at it, whoops, one of these potatoes will serve one person. So I've got six potatoes in here, so I'm, I'm thinking we're going to get uh, about six servings of potatoes on that. Okay, we're going to have to work on our microphones here. Okay. We're having to adjust our microphones, so just bear with us. Is it working now? I it was on. Can y'all, can, how can you hear me now? Is it any better or the same? All right, let me try something else. Let me take this thing off. Do you want to try my microphone? Can you hear me? Yeah. All right, can y'all hear me now? Is that any different? Is this one working? Can you hear me? Uh, okay. All right. He's he's gonna t he's gonna take my microphone because I'm loud enough to where I can. All right, can you hear me now? Okay, so we're gonna take our potatoes. We've cut them up, and I've got one potato per person. So I've got you know six potatoes here. And I've got them in water, so we want to make sure we keep them in water so uh, when the air hits them, they'll turn pink on us, and we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to cut them in little cubes. That way they all get cut uniformly, and they'll cook evenly. And when we get ready to boil them, then we will, uh, they'll all cook at the same time. So we're going to go ahead and get all this cut up, and I'm cutting them up in little half-inch cubes. And we'll put these in, in the water and we'll boil these probably about 15 minutes is what I normally boil my potatoes on. And I'll put a little bit of salt in the, in the pot with them as I'm cooking them. I don't put a lot of salt in them as I'm cooking them because I like to uh, take the potatoes and try them as I'm going. Because as we get ready to season them, as we mash them, that's when we want to add most of our, our spices and seasoning to it. So I put just a little bit in it when, we, when I start boiling them. Alright, so I've got a couple more here. I've got a total of six that I'm going to cut up. Well, this chicken is smelling good, Michael. It sure is. I can smell it. Let's see how many more i got here. I think i got maybe two more.
we're trying to gauge everything as we're cooking it or how it's going to take the longest or the shortest time to cook. And the uh, chicken will take the longest, followed by the cornbread and then the mashed potatoes. And then the last thing we're going to make is the gravy. That'll be the last thing that we'll put together today. Yeah. Okie dokie, he's almost, almost got the... done. I think I got one more in there. Have to get, reach in there and see. Yep. There's always one, one left. One Michael. hiding, ain't it? Ain't it? <laughs> Now, cooking uh, live like this, it's just like you cooking a meal at your house. Yep. You have to do the, everything um, as you're filming. All right, I believe that's everything. I'm going to give these a little bit of rinse and wash some of that starch off of these. And then we're going to put them in a, in a pan that we got on the stove with a little bit of salt. All right. I'm going to rinse these off and I'll turn it back over to you if you want to show them what the chicken yeah. looks like. Chicken is smelling delicious. Smells so good. Let me just get this board up here. Let me get that rinsed off. I like to clean up as I go. I like and too. I'm sure everybody else does if they have time. Sometimes you, you don't have time and you just have to do the cleanup at the end. But let me get over here. We're going to use that buttermilk. So I'm just going to let it sit there. Okay, I'm going to move you over here and show you the chicken. And I can guarantee you that it is smelling delicious. Can you see it? Smells so good. You want to put this on this bigger eye right here or the one on the back? Um, probably that bigger eye. We can turn the little part of Let's Let's do this one. Okay. Yeah. Alright, you can see I've got just the potatoes covered and I'm going to put a little bit of salt in them. We're going to bring those up to a boil. Like I said, we'll cook those about 15 minutes and one of them will get tender so we can mash them a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Here's the chicken. See, it's not brown enough to turn and it's not making that noise. I'm just going to check a few pieces. See, that one's getting a little bit brown, if you can see that. We're just going to let that cook a little. And should we go ahead and mix up the cornbread? Yep. Michael is going to mix up the cornbread. He is going to mix up the cornbread. He does a little bit different than what we do, but I'm sure it's delicious. Now, Michael, this is uh, white lily self rising. Okay, we got. We can use that. Yeah. And then cornmeal. Cornmeal is right here. Okay. And if you need anything else, I'll give you. Well, just a measuring bowl, and uh, I think I got some measuring cups here. We'll measure everything out. Get that. I'll have to get my gravy bowl out of here. This one bigger? Yeah. I don't think I need that one. This this will be okay, I think. For me. I'll just leave that right there because that'll be for the gravy. Alright, I'm gonna turn it over to Michael here. Um, 
Okay. Now, I'm going to talk louder. I'm going to try to get closer to the phone here so that you can hear me. But I have a 10 inch cast iron skillet You're that I've this. got right now. Right. That will help. Okay, I've got a 10 inch cast iron skillet that's cold, and I've got a stick of butter which is about eight tablespoons, and I am going to put six tablespoons of butter in my cast iron skillet, and I've got my oven cold, and I'm going to turn the oven on to 425, and I'm going to put my skillet in the oven, and we're going to heat the skillet and the butter up at the same time. All right, so we're going to put that in like that, and I'm going to cut the butter up in little pieces so it can melt a little bit faster. But we want our skillet to be as hot as we can possibly get it. So when we put our cornmeal in it, we'll have a, we'll start cooking it on the outside and give us that nice crust that we like on our cornbread. So there we go. We've got six tablespoons of the butter in our 10 inch cast iron skillet. I'm going to put this in the oven on 425 and we're going to heat this up. So I'll be right back and we'll start with the other ingredients. Yeah. Um, in case you all have just joined, we are cooking fried chicken, mealy gravy, cornbread, and um, mashed potatoes. And Michael is my brother's friend and our family friend and his business partner in crime for a long time. But um, Michael Bosch. You can find him, Michael Bosch Cooking, on YouTube. And we're so happy to have him here because his recipes are great. And uh, we will be cooking again tomorrow. We're not sure about the time yet. But we will be doing another cooking show tomorrow, probably live. And uh, we'll let you know the time. Okay, Michael. Alrighty, so we've got our cast iron skillet now in our oven, and our oven's heating up to 425. And we're going to go ahead with our ingredients for our cornbread. So, uh, we're going to start with uh, one cup of our self-rising flour. If you've got all-purpose flour, you can use that. That's what I normally use, but all-purpose uh, self-rising does the same effect to it. So let me get a cup of this flour out. All right, so we've got a cup of flour here. And I've got a cup of self-rising cornmeal. And we're gonna add that in. And being this is self-rising, this next step is optional, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it on in anyway. And if Joanne can help me here, we're going to get some uh, baking powder and baking soda. I forgot, I forgot to get that out, yep. Well, now that's self-rising flour. Do you still need it? Um, no, I guess I, we don't have to put that in there. I'll just go ahead and tell them, if you don't have the self-rising flour and the self-rising cornmeal uh, for this recipe, then if you just had all-purpose flour and just regular cornmeal, then use one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of baking soda and a quarter teaspoon of salt, and that will do the same thing as the self-rising. It never hurts if you wanted to put that in there anyway. You can put that on top of it. It really doesn't uh, detract from it, but that's how you turn uh, regular flour and regular cornmeal into uh, a self-rising uh, for this recipe. So it's one cup of self-rising flour and one cup of self-rising cornmeal that we've got here. And let me get something to mix that up for Let me get a spoon. All right, we're just gonna give that a good mix through. That's our dry ingredients that we're gonna have here. And I need to get another bowl because I'm going to put some eggs and some buttermilk in there and we're going to mix that together. Right there. Let me get you a whisk. Oh. I think I've got a small one over here. I'm going to put that back. Yeah. So now I've got two eggs and I've kind of got those at room temperature. We're going to break those. And we're going to make sure those look good before we do anything else with it because we don't want to waste any buttermilk with bad eggs. So we're going to check those first. We'll put those in our bowl and we're going to give those a little whisk through. I saw your uh, cornbread corn uh, 
and it looked delicious. Yep. All right, I need a tablespoon. I guess if you've got something that I can measure, I'm going to put two tablespoons of sugar in my right cornbread. Here. Oh, here we go. This is again optional. If you're making cornbread and you're going to be using that for your Thanksgiving dish, you do not want to put this in there because you don't want your cornbread sweet for your Thanksgiving meal. But for this cornmeal, cornbread, I'm going to put just a little bit of sugar in it. You're not going to taste it. And I'm going to put that with my dry ingredients. We're going to put two tablespoons in that. And again, this is optional. A lot of the restaurants here in the south, you go to those and you'll get cornbread and it is sweet. So they'll put more in it than I do. But this just kind of just adds just a little bit extra to it. You're, like I say, you're not going to really taste a sweet cornbread, but it is really good. All right, now we're going to put in a cup and a half of buttermilk. And I've got some measuring cups here, and I want to make sure that I got, yep, there's a cup. That way I can get you all the, the measurements for everything that we've got. So I've got a cup and a half of buttermilk. And we're going to add that to our eggs. And I'm just going to measure here half of this. And we're going to put that in with that. Alrighty. Let's give that a mix together. And give our dry ingredients a good mix together. And before I put these together, I want to make sure that my cast iron skillet is really hot before I do this. So I'm going to check on that to see how the butter is coming along. It probably takes, you know, 10-15 minutes for the cast iron skillet to get heated up. So before I mix those together, I'm going to give that a check and then I'm going to see if Joanne wants to get back and check on her chicken. Yes, the chicken is frying and it is doing really well. And I'm going to move you back over here again. To let you see the chicken, and I'm sorry that I'm moving around so much, but the best we can do right now, we're trying to figure out a way. Okay, can you all see the chicken? Okay, now, if you will listen to this chicken frying, it's real soft. It's a real soft thing now. Now, when I turn it over, you're going to hear a really fast brown sound. That's how I know when to turn it and also that it's brown. So, I'm going to turn. See how pretty and brown? See? Listen how fast. Can you hear that? Turn it all. Don't be afraid of it. I mean, just we're just cooking, and you, you know, if you mess up a little, you go back and you just keep going, fix it. The main thing is to make sure that your chicken gets done. Joanne, that looks really good. Yeah, it'll be good. Oh yeah. I'm sure that everybody is waiting on the mealy gravy. Yeah. And I hope that I'm able to give you measurements for it because I don't measure, but I'll try to measure everything and give you the measurements for it. All right, we're going to let that finish cooking. We may have to turn it again because the chicken, it's a, it's a big chicken. So, uh, and. I think I'm going to move these up to this aisle, Michael. Okay. They're not cooking as fast back there. What can we put our cast iron skillet on that's not going to melt anything? Would this be okay if you yeah. put that on there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to mix these together. So we'll just leave the camera right there. All right. And we'll just mix it right on that, right on this marble piece that we've got here. Let me grab something because that skillet is going to be scalded and hot. Here's you some pot holders. Let's get you several because we don't want to get burned up. No. But. Okay. All right, I'm going to pull this cast iron skillet out. And you can see that our butter's melted and it is really hot. And I'm going to leave this 
pot holder on the end of it. That way I'll know that it's hot and I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to move this to the side over here so you can see me mix everything together. All right, so we've got our dry ingredients and we've got our buttermilk and our eggs and we're going to mix those together now. And let's give that a good mix through. And again, this is how I make my cornbread on my channel. And I know that Joanne said that she does hers a little different. But this is how I make my cornbread. And you just want to get this all mixed together. And I'll show you the consistency. It's okay if it's got a few lumps in it. It'll cook out. You don't want it really lumpy. But it will have, you know, just a few lumps in it. We're not making pancakes here. here. I mean, pancake batter. But uh, there'll be a few in it. And we'll give that a good mix through here. What have you got the oven set on? Oven set on 425. 425. Yeah. And how long do you cook your cornbread? Uh, 20 to 25 minutes. All right, that's what we're looking at there. So that's the consistency that we've got with our cornbread. All right, now I'm going to grab these handles because I don't want to get burned with this. And we're going to put in our batter. And you'll hear it sizzle if the butter's hot enough. It's getting our cooking for our cornbread. There we go. We're going to put this in the oven now and we'll put it in there for 20 to 25 minutes. We want it to come out a golden brown. Right. So now's the waiting game. Yep. Okay, we're going to clean up over here for a minute. Jane or John, do one of you want to come in here and read questions for us and we'll answer some questions? Chicken as easy as can be. All you got to do is batter it up good, put it in oil, and uh, we're getting an echo back there. But it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Shirley wants to know where you find Michael at. Where did I find Michael at? Where can they find Oh, that? My, my YouTube channel is uh, Michael Bosch Cooking, and uh, you can check that out. It's uh, all individual words. It's um, Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L. My last name is Bosch, B-O-S-C-H. And then we've got cooking as the last word on it. So it's Michael Bosch Cooking, and I've got uh, a lot of different recipes on there that you can go and check out. Yeah, he's got some good recipes. Um, check him out on YouTube. Um, and he's going to be here tomorrow helping me uh, with our meal tomorrow. Yeah, we might make a Mediterranean dish or we might make a Spanish dish. It's, we've got the ingredients for both. We've got both, so we might even make both. Who knows? We'll check it out and see <laughs> tomorrow. But it'll either be a Mediterranean dish or it's going to be a Spanish dish that we'll have tomorrow. Yeah. So we're going to eat good while Michael's here. And I think tomorrow we're going to have, I know we're going to have, a baked chicken because I got a chicken out of the freezer to cook this morning and it didn't even start to thaw by the time we were ready to almost make the video so Michael went to Ingalls and got us another chicken so that chicken will be thawed by tomorrow and we're gonna bake a chicken Michael. We'll bake a chicken tomorrow and uh, we can have a, uh, a Greek salad or we can add some, uh, we, yeah, we might do that too. We could make the, the Spanish beans that I could make and the Greek salad and have the baked chicken and just have a little bit 
from uh, different parts around the world. We can have a baked chicken from the south here, and the Spanish beans, we can make those, and we can have our Mediterranean salad on the side. So maybe that's what we'll do tomorrow. We just do a little bit of everything. Yeah, and that salad, it it's, looks so delicious. It's really good. The dressing on that, you can use that uh, for any, any salad that you've got. It's, it's really versatile what you can use it for. Uh, Janice Taylor would like to know why you didn't put a lid on the chicken on the chicken. Well, the reason I didn't put a lid on my chicken is because I want my chicken to be really crunchy. I don't want it to steam. I don't want it to steam and uh, drop the moisture back down in the grease because I'm going to make gravy on it. Any other time, if I wasn't going to make gravy, I would probably cook it with a lid because it splatters. But it, I don't know if you can see how much steam is coming off of that. See here? I, you probably can't see it, but it's really uh, getting rid of a lot of the moisture. So that's why I do not put a lid on when I'm making gravy. Linda says hello from South and Coast, Ohio. Hello from Ohio, Linda. And Susan King Stratton says, Welcome, Michael. I'd like to from Kentucky. What kind of foods does Michael cook? Well, a lot of the cook, uh, a lot of the videos that I've got online are. Uh, I do a lot of international foods. I have a Spanish heritage, and so there's a lot of the dishes that I have on there that are uh, from Puerto Rico that I have on my dishes. I did. Uh, I was raised here in the South, so I know how to cook Southern comfort food. And if it's not fried, it's not Southern. So we definitely have a lot of uh, Southern uh, cooking on my channel also. And I've got some desserts. I do a lot of desserts. I make cheesecakes and uh, uh, just just a, just a variety of different things. So it's not any one specific style of food that I cook. I just kind of cook it all. Yeah, Michael's gonna have to make some of his desserts and bagels, and he makes homemade bread yeah. and um, all kinds of gooey, delicious stuff. Okay. But. Uh, yeah, hummus. I make hummus. That's uh, yeah. one of my favorite things that I love to make. And a lot of the dishes and things that I make, I'll give you a vegan variant to it. So if you're on a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet, I'll give you a ways how you can take a, a normal dish and turn it vegetarian or vegan. And uh, so we do those. And I make condiments. I've got one of my videos on there where I make mayonnaise. So if you ever run out of mayonnaise at the house, you can make it. Because mm -hmm. I'm sure you've got an egg and some oil and some salt in your cabinet. And uh, a hand mixer, you can make mayonnaise at home. You don't have to go to the store and buy any. But here in the South, we use Dukes, and I think Joanne's got Dukes. And oh, we used yeah. some Dukes in our video yesterday. I uh, taught Joanne yesterday how to make a chickpea salad, and you'll have to check out that video on her channel. It did not last, and uh, it was eat up within 10 minutes. And uh, I posted that video this morning, but something happened to it. It had shrunk. So I will upload that video this afternoon. We don't have very good internet here and you can just upload one thing at a time and it's ridiculous, but that's the way it is. Um, Jerry Levin. Jerry, hello. Hey, Jerry Levin. And Sharon Wilson-Patterson. Hey, Sharon Wilson-Patterson. Sharon is our cousin. Oh, thank you, Linda. No, we don't make GFG mayonnaise, Roger Mill Salts. Um, but we. What is GFG? What is that? That's what some kind of mayonnaise Roger Lee Mill Salts eats. Oh. Is that like a, there's a certain mayonnaise, it's the salad dressings. Maybe it's a salad dressing and not a mayonnaise. It Maybe could that's be. What JFG is. I'm always giving him a hard time about his mayonnaise because he's JFG and I'm Dukes. And I've got Dukes in the house too if I'm not making Christine it. Christine says hello from Lee Ohio. Hey, Christine from Ohio. I'm going to turn the chicken a little. This is a big chicken, so we've got to make sure that it's cooked good yeah. done. Any, any more, Jane? Um, 
I'm going to grab a fork so I can test the potatoes. I can't hear because this chicken is frying. So I Nancy, Nancy, Penny Yancey. Penny Yancey. Penny Yancey. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching us. Um, we love to have new viewers. And uh, I think I'll give you a little history, the reason why that I started this. Mother and I started this adventure about a year, year ago this month because I wanted to document mother's recipes on TikTok. That's where I started. And um, then we moved recently to Facebook here to do our uh, recipes. But it was to have a diary, a video diary for all the grandkids and everything in the future. So that's why we started this. And uh, we're hoping that Mother gets better and able to come in and join us in the kitchen uh, at least uh, part of the time. And, uh, but yeah, we just wanted to document our recipes. We didn't have any idea that it would be uh, as popular as it's been, but we want to keep we want to keep it going because we live in the Smoky Mountains here, Appalachians, and uh, the, our language, the way we speak and talk, it's a dying language, and uh, there's not many people around that still talk the way that we do. And I want to keep that alive because the way that we talk, the way that I talk on here to you all, that's the way I talk all the time. I'm just country to the bone. You can ask anybody that knows me. I'm just plain country. So. There's nothing wrong with that? No. No, there's not. And we have a lot of old sayings and the way of cooking and eating and stuff that's... Uh, I guess it's different than a lot of people. We cook things maybe just a little bit different than some of the southerners do, but it's it's the way we were raised up in the country. We survived, you know, on raising gardens and um, having a hog to kill. And Daddy used to hunt, get squirrels and rabbits, and so it's the way that I was raised. And I want, I don't want that to die out. And a lot of people, you know, like my, I, my daughter and my grandkids, they've all went off to college and, you know, they don't talk this way. So they don't, they educate you in college, but they, they don't want you to talk like what we do, so. But that's why we started. It's not going to be long now until I'm going to be able to make the mealy gravy. The chicken, let me show you the chicken. Chicken is frying up really nice. I'll be taking it up pretty soon. But in the meantime, I have a big bowl here. And... I am going to use a can of carnation evaporated milk. Shake it up good. Let me wash the top off. Okay, wash the top off. And what I'm going to do. You know, those type can openers are hard to find. I have a That's broken true. one, and you can't find them like that anymore. I know. But anyway, I'm going to pour this in my bowl. 
And ever how much liquid you have in here will be the amount of gravy you have, just a little bit more. Can you all see that good? Jane, can you see it? The gravy I'm fixing. Okay, now I'm gonna fill this can up with water. potatoes to check to see how they're coming along. Okay, pour your water in here. A full can. Okay, that's going to be your gravy. Okay? Can you sit back right for me, please? And I think that our chicken is getting close to being finished. Um... Let me get something to put it in here. Sorry if I'm going to put the door in your face. I'm going to get a plate here. Is that okay now? That's going to be done before everything else is. It looks like. It's okay. We'll keep it. I always put a paper towel. And if your chicken gets done before your potatoes and your bread, you just take it up and you can uh, keep it warm on the back of the stove or in the oven. Now, I think some of these pieces are done. See how good and brown and crispy. Move it around a little. I wish I could smell this. That chicken smells incredible. See how crunchy that crust is? Check these potatoes again and see how they're doing. They're almost done, not quite. You can stick your fork down into your chicken. See how easy this goes in? That is done. I don't want it to get too brown. You can just turn it around any which way that you want to to get uh, the sides done and brown. See that part's not brown, so I'm going to stand it up so that it'll brown. This piece is ready to come out. And I think this is done. It takes a little bit longer to cook for some reason. Yeah, it does. Take this piece out. Okay, I'm, I've cut most of my chicken out, and I'm going to cut the heat off for just a minute while the other stuff cooks. Mm -hmm. 
cornbread has been cooking about 15 minutes. Let me take a peek at that and see. Yeah, it's coming on good. Hey, let these last two pieces stay in there just a little while. Now here's what our chicken looks like. It's good and crispy. And I can let it sit uh, on the back of the stove. These two pieces are just a little bit thicker. So I'm going to, but they're tender, that's a breast. So it's cooked tender. Okay, I'm cutting this off. And that's too much grease, so I'm going to take some of that grease off when it cools down a little bit. So that's our fried chicken. And I wish that you could smell it. I've got heavy cream in there if you want to use some. Oh, that would be better than the milk. Yeah. Let's do that. I'm going to taste these. Yeah, this heavy cream needs to be used up. I'm going to leave those potatoes cooking for another five more minutes. I got a little late start on them, so did the cornbread, so. Well, it's okay. Yeah. It's cooking. It's cooking, real cooking. So with our mashed potatoes, we'll be either using, a, you can use a, a mashed potato, a potato masher, or you can use a uh, mixer, whichever one you want to do. And with the potato masher, it'll leave it, uh, the potatoes a little bit more lumpier than you would with a mixer. So it's just however you want to do them. If you like creamy uh, potatoes with no, no, with the consistency of just really smooth, then you can use a hand mixer, or you can use a potato masher, is what I'll be using today. And I'll be putting some salt, pepper, uh, some cream, and some butter in. That's how we'll do ours today. And you can put cheese in them too and garlic. It's just however you want to do them. You can doctor them up any way you want to. And this is just the basics of cooking the mashed potatoes. And you want those to be fork tender. And uh, you can just doctor them up as much as you want to. If you want to put some garlic in them, you can uh, mince up about three or four garlic cloves and put that in there. And then if you wanted some a, a cheesy potato, then just take some grated uh, cheddar cheese and you can grate that up and mix them in with your potatoes once you get them mashed up and have a uh, garlicky, cheesy potato. Just any way you want to do it. And this is just the basics of how we're going to do it today. Okay, Michael. Thank you. I'm going to take some of this oil and grease where I cooked the chicken off and put it in this cup. Now this is a cup that can be used in the dishwasher. It's not going to break. I have a paper towel in the bottom of it. And I'm just going to dip off some of this oil because it's too much. And I will try to show you once... Um, once I get it dipped off. And all those little crunchy bits, you want to leave those down in the in the grease. I think our potatoes are done. Alright. Is that how you do yours too? Just want to check. Yeah, fork tender. Fork tender, yep. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to take this to the sink and I'm going to drain the water off and I'll come back and I'll make my mashed potatoes right here and let y'all see how we do that. So I'm going to turn the I hope I'll be back once I drain the water out of them. Okay. I'm going to keep staying this mess here. Got to get this off. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit more of that off. That just looks like too much.
Okay. I'm going to do the best I can to measure the amount that I put into this oil. You need cornmeal and flour. I use self-rising on everything. Okay, I'm going to set this to the side because this is hot. Now I'm going to leave my spoon in so nobody will grab it. Okay. I'm just over here getting me out some flour and some meal so that I can measure. Check our cornbread again. It's looking good. So maybe another five minutes. Let me pull it out so I can get a really good eyeball on it. Make sure. Oh yeah. I think that's done. That is done. You need a plate to nope, turn yep. it up on? Yep. I've got my cornbread out of the oven. You can see here it's got a nice brown crust on it. And I'm going to get Joanne to hand me a plate and we'll turn it over and we'll put it out on the uh, I've got a Sorry, people. It's okay. Gonna have to get a plate. Alrighty. I'm gonna grab another pot holder. Here, let me scoot enough. this out of the way. Alright. Alright, so we're gonna put our plate over our skillet. We'll turn it upside down. And there we are. We've got our cornbread. Oh, got a nice goodness. brown crust on it. Look how good that looks, everyone. Can you see? Oh my goodness, it smells like nutty butter. Mmm. Okay, Michael, I'm going to set it right here. All right. And we're ready to make the mashed potatoes too whenever yeah. we do that. Yeah. Um, just go ahead. All right, so we've got our potatoes here, and I'm going to put a little bit of salt in them. And we're going to put a little pepper in them. Speak up. All right, we're going to add some pepper to it. And then I've got two tablespoons of butter here. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. I don't really measure anything. I just kind of eyeball it. And I've got another stick of butter here that I've had out coming close to room temperature. And we're going to put another little bit in there with that. So I'm going to cut another couple of tablespoons off. You can't never have enough butter in your potatoes. So we'll put those in like that. And then I'm going to give them a little mash. Let me get me a pot holder. And we're going to smash our potatoes up and get that butter melted. And we'll take a look at it and see if we want to add any more butter to it or add any more seasoning to it as you do. So we're going to get that consistency of those mashed potatoes like that. And then I'm going to take a little bit of that cream. And I'll put a little bit of cream in it. Let's see. I'm not going to measure anything. Just kind of look at it with your eyes and see what we're going to come up with. And give that little mash through there. And I think I'm going to put just a little bit more butter in it. All right, let's get a little bit more butter, maybe another tablespoon, which is about that much there. All right, let's get that in there. And then I'm going to take a little bit more of the cream. We probably put maybe a half a cup. All right. So we're going to go with that. We'll put that out of the camera's way. And we'll give that a mix through. And those are the consistency that I like right there when I'm looking at it. All right, so. I'm just cutting the stove off mine. That's good. All right, there we go. Let me show you what this looks like. You see, our potatoes are really good. We want to give these a taste and see if we want to add any more salt and pepper to them at this point. So I'm going to give those a taste and see how we're going to do. I think we need a little bit more salt and pepper. All right, so they look really good, Michael. Yeah. Creamy. All right, so that's, that's how you make your potatoes. And like I say, you just... Just taste it as you go to see if you need to add any more salt and pepper. And the consistency you're looking for 
is that you don't you know like I say with this uh, potato masher we got we it gives it a nice thick consistency if you use a hand mixer you can get it really really fine with that so that's where we're gonna leave that I'm gonna put a little more pepper in it and these are ready to go and I'll turn it over to Joanne and we'll make our mealy gravy okay now this is about how much oil I have in the pan can you all see that with the crumbles from the fried chicken. That's probably five tablespoonfuls, I'm gonna guess. Okay. Now. What I'm going to do, can you all see? Okay. This is regular uh, white lily self-rising flour. Any self-rising flour would do. I've got a big tablespoon here, this size. And I'm gonna put one, two, and a half for good measure. Okay. I've got my stove back on, uh, just medium right now until I get my flour and meal. Okay, with the cornmeal, I'm gonna put one heaping in the pan. And another heaping And a half, just because. Now, Joanne, was this any kind of self-rising? Does it matter if it? If yeah, self-rising. Okay. Okay. Now, what I'm doing is I am gonna stir this and get this brown and nutty smelling. You don't want it to burn. You want to keep stirring it constantly. And I want to put some salt in it. Um. Uh, about that much. And I'm just going to keep stirring. Now, if you have questions, uh, my sister, my brother, who's in there hungry and wanting to eat, will uh, let me know. So if you have any questions about this gravy, because I know you've all been waiting for the gravy. Let me see if I can see anything here. Can they see good? It looks like they can, and everybody's saying yum, 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 and salt, and I'm hungry. So yeah, we're, I, we're all hungry. I tell you, I wish I wished you all could come and eat with us. I do. But we'd have to have a bigger kitchen, right. a lot more cooks, and it'd be so much fun. You can't never have enough cooks in the kitchen. Is that the expression that they say? Are there too many kicks to kitch, cooks in the kitchen spoil the dinner? I don't know. No. Nah. <laughs> you, uh, you just need room to where you can film That's good. True. That's true. From okay. Just keep on stirring. Okay. Just ask him. I'm going to put just a little more. Just ask him to call back, Mother, when I'm not busy. Do y'all get as many prank calls as they get up here? Yeah. I, 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 I've gotten to the point where I can't even hardly answer my phone anymore for the people trying to sell me some type of something that's expired on something that I've got. Yeah, I know. It's, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. I despise it. <laughs> okay, keep stirring. I'm going to turn it up a little. Now I added just a little bit more flour to that. And I'm going really slow because I want you all to see. Um, I could probably cook it faster uh, if I wasn't filming it and trying to teach you all. 
But now, when you do like this in your pan, you feel that cornmeal. And that's what makes it mealy gravy. You have to have the cornmeal to make it mealy gravy. And you have to have the flour to make it gravy. Yep. To make it thicken up. So, going to go up just a tad more. Because this is a roux. And I want it brown. So here we go. It's starting up. Starting to brown. Just a little. Can you see? Can you see? Can they see, Jane? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, see how it's turning? It's getting a little brown. Now, see when I'm starting my spoon, see how it don't come together? It's separate. Okay, got to really watch at this point. It can go south really fast. Yeah, well, you can take it <laughs> off. I mean, it. Um, you just want to stir, 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 and if it starts getting too brown, just uh, scoot it off the stove. We like brown, our gravy brown. It gives that nutty, delicious taste and aroma. You can smell it. Mmm. Can you smell that nutty? And it looks wonderful. Yeah. Okay. It's getting brown. See yep. it? I'm not going to take it much past this point. Um, because I'm teaching you all how to make it, or trying to. Okay, here is my uh, milk or cream. Pour that in. Set that bowl aside. Now stir, stir, stir. Boy, that smells so yeah, delicious. That activated all of those flavors from that grease and everything. Mm -hmm. Stir from the bottom. Get all that good stuff out of the bottom. You don't want that stuck on the bottom. You want that in your gravy. Now, at this point, uh, when your gravy starts boiling, if it's too thick, don't panic. You can put in a little bit of milk. But we want to stir it from the bottom good. starting to want to boil and what we're going to do we're going to let it boil for just a minute or two keep scraping around the bottom okay look at that mm, I wish you could smell this it's boiling I'm going to let it boil just a little bit and that's the perfect consistency for gravy. And that's really getting thick too. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm fixing to pour it up here. You got it? And the little crunchies still in there. Oh my goodness. Will you set that yes. same for me, please? Okay, here is your gravy. Can you see it? Oh my goodness, it smells so good. There is your gravy. That's mealy gravy. Okay? Okay, we are going to plate up a plate. And I will hopefully make a picture <laughs> for you all to go with the video. But this gravy and chicken, I mean, you can't mess up. You cannot mess up. So you just watch this video when you get ready to make some. And 
You just do it like I did. It's simple. It's not hard. Don't be afraid. Just do it, okay? Now I'm going to have to hang up because I've got hungry people back there chomping at the bit watching this video saying, mmm, I'm starved. So I'm going to feed them, make a video, and I read all of your comments. I don't get to uh, respond to all of them, but I read all of them. Um, and we love you all for praying for Mother. And thank you so much. And God bless you all. And remember, we may not see each other face to face, but you all are family. You're our extended family. And we love you all. And if you can learn anything from me, I'm happy about it. Michael, you got anything to say? No, I appreciate everybody that tuned in today. I Sorry about the uh, microphone earlier with the audio on that, but hopefully we've got that fixed out now. And like Joanne said, anything that we can teach you to cook, just let us know. Uh, if you can check out my channel, you can check out that at uh, Michael Bosch Cooking. And if there's anything you'd like for me to see to cook that you're interested in doing, and the same thing with Joanne, if there's something that you're wanting to see her or prepare for y'all, uh, just put in the description box uh, whatever y'all would like, and let's we'll see if we can't put it together. And, uh, and we appreciate y'all tuning in to us today, and uh, hope you try some of these dishes out that, that we made today. Okay, we will be on live tomorrow unless something happens with our internet. Our internet went flunky this morning for a little while, but it come back up. So I will post uh, and let you all know what time we're going live tomorrow. So you all have a good afternoon, stay safe, and remember, we love you all. I wasn't off. It takes a minute. Well, I didn't do anything. No, you just went. No, <laughs> Okay. They sent prayers to you. You can edit that. Oh, you hate that. That's live. Oh, Lord, me and my big. Can I not stay quiet? Lord, have mercy. Gosh, I'm just waiting to dig in that leather, Millie gravy with chicken. Here, Michael, charge these up good for more. You've had a lot of pain here, Michael. You're going to have to start talking. Well, we what didn't. What was that about? I we don't, I don't understand it. We were side by side. You came across fine, and Michael was so low. Yeah, I'm just hurt. loud. But that's how he is at home, too. You can't hear him. I'm going to let you uh, take well, your mother, and I've got to sit down. Yeah.